The kidney channel arises at the bottom of the small toe, <coughs> moves to the heart of the foot, zu xin, heart of soul, then to kidney two, ran gu, follows the back of the inner ankle, separates to enter the heel center, above to kick, shui, the inside to the inner knee corner, the inside of the thigh, piercing the spine, subordinating the kidneys, and networking the bladder. The second branch goes from the kidneys, above piercing the liver and the diaphragm, entering the lung center, following the larynx and the throat, and pressing the root of the tongue. A third branch comes out of the lungs to network the heart and pour into the chest center. The first thing that most of us notice in this channel description is that there is no description of a channel that moves up from kidney 11 to kidney 16. There is no part of the channel that moves up from the pubic bone to the navel. There is, however, a description of the channel moving down from the navel to the pubic bone. From kidney 10, the channel moves on the inside of the thigh up to the perineal floor, where it intersects with do one, goes up the spine, I believe the front of the spine, then moves forward to meet the kidneys and down to meet the bladder. It is when the channel moves from the spine to the kidneys and the bladder that we get kidney 16 down to kidney 11. In my opinion, the numbering system got the sequence wrong. Of course, if we look at this very same channel, as the chong, then the flow is obviously going up from kidney 11 to kidney 16 and further up. But when we're looking at it as purely the kidney channel, we cannot really say that the flow is from kidney 11 up to 16, but that it makes much more sense that the kidney channel here moves down from the navel down to the pubic bone, ending in a bone, while the chong channel moves up in the same lane, so to speak. Then we have a branch that comes out at kidney 16 and moves up to the liver and the diaphragm, to the lung center, to the throat, and to the root of the tongue. And finally, we have a branch from the lungs to the heart and to the chest center at REN 17. A few connections come out in this trajectory. Although we have the bladder as the end of the first branch, the root of the tongue for the second, and the chest center for the third branch, it is easy enough to see that all these branches home to a bone, the pubic bone for the first channel, the hyoid bone, which is the root of the tongue for the second trajectory, and the sternum for the third. And these three <coughs> are somewhat unusual. They are not acting so much as weight-bearing structures, but in a sense, they are acting as nodes, bones that are nodes. So even though Ling Shu Ten in these channel descriptions attribute control of the bones to the gallbladder channel, and also, for example, the control of the sinews to the bladder, which is unusual for us nowadays, it also states that when the kidney channel is shaken, there is deficiency in the bone. So the channel description does allow for bones in there. There is another bone that the kidney channel has an affinity to, which is the heel within the first trajectory. The expression there is bie ru gen zhang, separates to enter the heel center, almost as if this is yet another branch that separates to home to the heel. We also see that the kidney has a strong affinity to the lungs and to the throat, and especially to its xiao yin pair, the heart. It networks with the heart, and although the tongue is not part of the heart channel's trajectory, it is its opening tissue, and the kidney comes up to the root of the tongue. The other channels do not have this kind of connection with their arm-leg, same-named channel. The spleen does not enter or network with the lungs, for example, and the liver does not do that with the pericardium. Neither do the stomach or the large intestine or the bladder and the small intestine. So this is a bit of a unique closeness between the two Xiaoyan channels. As with the spleen and bladder channel, 
In the kidney channel, we see the expression schweine, the inside of the kick or the stomp. People usually translate it as the calf. I feel this is only partially correct. For one thing, the calf would normally be fey. But more importantly, the translation of calf seems to be missing an energetics that I feel is important. Chwai is to kick, meaning it has the leg in it and then it has focus, juan. Juan to focus shows a plant that's growing above ground as well as below ground. It suggests a stomp, an upward movement in the lower leg that is initiated with a downward press, and that contributes to its upward movement. This stomping is what supports our upright posture. We need to push down in order to grow up, your basic yin-yang interaction. And this is provided by the kidney and the bladder channels, which are structural, and the spleen, which supports the rising of the clear yang. In Ling Shu Ten, the kidney channel is said to move through the foot's heart and then to come out at kidney two. <clears throat> there is a common idea of the heart of soul as a point that is separate from kidney one. Although many people in practice take kidney one, where I might take heart of soul. Kidney one is described as one third <clears throat> of the distance between the base of the toes and the heel. Heart of soul is about one zone in front of it in the depression created by the ball of the foot. The picture on the right shows a common location of kidney one, which is not according to the current texts. This is the location that I would take heart of soul. However, according to the golden mirror, this is the location of kidney one, and the expression used to describe that location is the depression in the heart of the soul. So these are two points that can be considered as kidney one or as kidney one and heart of soul. Kidney one, Yang Chuan, the bubbling spring, the spring that bursts forward, is related by name to heart one, Ji Chuan, the supreme spring, one of the connections between the two Shaoyin channels. The character Chuan, as spring, appears also under the knees, as in spleen nine and gallbladder 34, as well as at the ankle at kidney five, and suggest a sort of push upwards, and this is what happens at the center of the foot. The kidney channel has an intimate connection with the spine, especially with the lower back, as well as with the heel. Heart of soul and kidney one both treat the spine and the heel. For the spine, I prefer the location of heart of soul. Kidney 2, Rangu, the blazing valley, is a place where the character Gu may actually be referring to a character that's different, which is Yu, desire. Desire has the character Gu on the left, with the addition of a yawn or a need on the right. When we yawn, it is lack of air. We need air. So Yu is a gaping need, a valley, a gap in our needs. I suspect that in kidney two, you has been shortened to just the gap, the valley, gu. Nowadays, the run, the blazing, that is in kidney two, means correct. And if we want to make it into blazing, that would be the addition of another fire radical. But in previous eras, the run as it is written in kidney two also had the meaning of roast. It is a picture of dog meat on a fire. So this point is about burning desires. When we run after our desires too strongly, the adrenals get overly activated and eventually weaken. The feet will get tired and there will be pain on kidney two. Pressure pain on kidney two indicates an adrenal exhaustion and an inability to gather the correct resources to fulfill our needs. It also happens to be the fire point of the kidney channel. So pressure pain here suggests an inflammation in the channel to be treated with kidney 7 and kidney 10, the metal and water points. To check for pressure on kidney 2, do not just press in one place, but rather rub the area 
going from spleen 4 to kidney 2. This allows us to check the so-called tiredness of the feet that reflects the exhaustion of the kidneys. This is my interpretation of the name Rangu, burning desires. There are obviously other interpretations, including ones that take the character Gu here to mean grain or food, as in Gu Qi, and kidney too then becomes the place where the combustion power of the food comes from, and then it moves to the spleen, and it is said to have a channel branch that moves from kidney two to spleen eight, DG, the earth machine. I do not have a clear explanation for the name of kidney three, Tai Xi, the great creek. Yes, Xi Creek in the characters um, is in the characters for many other points that are between tendons, and kidney three is definitely in that kind of space that could be visualized as a mountain stream. The Shu stream Yuan points of the five Yin um, channels all have either Tai great as in spleen 3, tai bai, liver 3, tai chong, lung 9, tai yuan, or in the case of the pericardium, da, big, which is basically the same character minus one stroke, and that would be pericardium 8, da ling. Sorry, pericardium 7, da ling. Heart 7 is the exception, and that may be due to the heart channel being envisioned at a later period with different ideas. This is an area where many people with age develop varicosities. It is as if the kidney has been too active and can no longer contain the desires and activity of the person's life. So the blood, representing emotions, is no longer contained. It is possible that the choice of the character she was somehow trying to point to this also, the blood vessels, as the left side of the character, the phonetic part, which is now serving as a question mark, was originally used for a woman being punished into work of weaving and spinning. So the blood vessels look like they're being weaved or being spun around kidney three. Of course, for TCM practitioners, this is a most significant point. <clears throat> for me, it is a point I would consider when using the kidney channel if the pulse is rapid, and I will needle it towards the Achilles tendon. It is also the point that by dogma is meant to be the point of choice for hypothyroid patients. But I find that this is not, this is rarely the best point for them. The kidney channel is the main channel to treat for thyroid problems because the kidney channel circles the throat and the thyroid is a gland and therefore belongs to the kidney main. However, I find that kidney seven or kidney nine will tend to do a better job for hypothyroid patients. The official guidelines are that kidney three is for hypo, kidney seven or kidney seven and 10 for hyper, and kidney nine for goiter. In my own practice, it tends to be kidney seven or kidney nine for either hyper or hypo. Just above kidney three, there may be a nodule in people with brain injuries or brain problems and I use it needled upwards towards kidney seven in patients with brain problems. In practice, I do not distinguish between kidney four and five, <clears throat> and I use a point adjacent to the calcaneum bone, needling down towards the bone for asthma and other breathing issues. This is a point to use when the patient complains of difficulty breathing in while spleen 4 is used when the patient is complaining about problems that are on exhalation. If the problem is in both inhalation and exhalation, kidney 4 is usually the point to start with. Kidney 4, Da Zhong, the big bell, connotes the chest, especially the lungs, which the kidney has a special affinity to. Zhong, a bell, is a servant that strikes metal that is, a gong, a bell, or a clock. We have two organs that are like a clock. They are the heart and the lungs, constantly beating. And of course, the left part of the character, the metal, or gold character, points to the lungs. However, in Gallbladder 39, 
Xuanzhong, the suspended veil, I interpret this very same character as relating to the heart, as a heart that is suspended, skipping beats. So one's interpretation of characters will vary much depending on how one sees the point in different contexts, especially in the context of what it treats. And in the case of Golbada 39, because suspended has the character of the heart in it, it was easy to divert it to the heart, whereas in the kidneys, it was easy to divert the same character more towards the lungs. Kidney 5, Shui Chuan, the water fountain, is another point whose name I have not penetrated, and I do not have much clarity over. Being attached to the heel, the notion of a fountain moving upwards does make sense. Kidney 6, Zhao Hai, the illuminating ocean, is an example of how we can derive many meanings and applications from a point name. Zhao is to illuminate, to shine light on something. It is to make something apparent by summoning the sun and then putting it under the light of fire, getting two kinds of lights to see it clearly. Hai, ocean, is where all the water goes. And that makes it a metaphor for life, the ocean of life. Not just my life or your life, but all of life from time immemorial. This was one of the first points that I learned an application for based on its point names. It is part of the ocean treatment for mineral imbalance. Ocean implies salt and hence minerals. And kidney 6, Zhao Hai, spleen 10, Shui Hai, Ren 6, Qi Hai, small intestine 8, Xiao Hai, and heart 3, Xiao Hai, are a combination that treats people with suspected mineral imbalances, which may show as stones, muscle cramps, or some skin issues like psoriasis. All these points have the character ocean in them. Two decades later, I was contemplating a phrase in the Heart Sutra, where Avalokiteshvara, Guan Yin, is said to be residing in the realm of perfect understanding and sheds light on the components of the person, the body and the mind, to realize that they are empty, that they contain each other and everything else. With that realization, the Bodhisattva overcomes all ill-being. The phrase is, shed light on the five skandhas and found them to equally empty. After this penetration, she over came ill-being. Zhao Jian Wu Yun Jie Kong Du Yi Jie Ku E. So this Zhao at the very beginning of the sentence, Zhao Jian, is the same Zhao as in Kidney 6. And at the very end of the sentence, we have the expression for ill-being, which is Ku E. Ku, bitter, is a grass and the character Ten, meaning a grass that is old and withered. It's been around ten times kind of thing. It is now dry and has no juice. <clears throat> uh, which is distress or an adversity, is a crouched person under a cliff or an overhang. So sickness or ill-being, mental or physical, is related to, rooted in, the lack of upness in our posture, <clears throat> in our withering, shrinking, which physically constricts our breath and our circulation in the space of foot organs. And the remedy for ill-being, this slumpness, is to shed light. And shedding light is what kidney six is about. Of course, one might say, but wait, the Heart Sutra is not a medical text, and this phrase is about meditation on emptiness, nothing to do with kidney six. Furthermore, the Heart Sutra was not composed until way after kidney six was named Zhao Hai, and quite possibly was a Sanskrit text to begin with. In fact, it probably was. Yes, this is all correct. And yet separating the space between the heel and the ankle bone, the activation of kidney six activates the inner legs, the perineal floor, and supports and creates space throughout the whole spine and the torso. We can take our ideas from anywhere from China, from India, Europe, America, or the Han Dynasty of the 21st century. What we need to do is use our imagination. 
whatever feeds our imagination, and then apply it to the physical body. If it actually works, it may well be different from what the Han medical ancestors started out with, but it may still point out to the same reality that they saw. So for me, the name Kidney 6, being that it is illuminating the ocean, the ocean of life, does make a connection to an unrelated Buddhist sutra, which then feeds back to a physical idea of ill-being and lack of uprightness in our posture, meaning yin and yang are not moving well. The clear yang is not rising, the dirty yin is not descending. These seemingly different sources can still lead us to something worthwhile. Some people might do this using astrology, geography, or perhaps cooking recipes, or logo puzzles, or music pieces that they love. I happen to have an interest in Buddhist writings, so this is a part of my life that I bring into interpreting point names. Each one of us will be bringing whatever is alive in us to our interpretation of the meridians and the points, and I'm pretty sure that this is what the Han Dynasty ancestors do, did also. Kidney 6 and the character Zhao, to illuminate, has both the sun and fire in it. Zhao is to summon, under the, to order the sun, and then to put light to it. That is to illuminate. This is a bit similar to Bladder 1, Jing Ming. The bright, the understanding eyes. Ming, bright or understanding, is composed of the sun and the moon, a double light summoning all available light sources so as to be bright. And the Yin Chao channel starts with Kidney 6 shedding light, summoning the sun and the fire, and ends at Bladder 1, where the sun and the moon offer the brightness, the clarity, the understanding. Yin Chao is considered to be the meditation or the contemplation channel. Kidney 6 to shed light on the ocean, the ocean of life, is how we start our meditation journey, and it comes to fruition when we gain clear understanding or bright eyes, as in Bladder 1. Kidney 6 is the original point in the adrenal treatment, which is Kidney 6 and Kidney 27. And adrenal shock shows as pressure pain just below Kidney 16 at the navel, level of the navel, just below it. Kidney 6 is also the original point in the treatment for a weak perineal floor, a weak lower dantian, causing slumpness in the torso and the organs. The original protocol was kidney 6, inner yin, mu shu, and either stomach 9 or bladder 2 or below the teeth. As I grew as a practitioner, I started noticing that I use kidney 7 more and more instead of kidney 6, in both of these treatments, the adrenal and the weak dantian, the slumping treatment. I believe this is because, for most people, creating the activation of kidney 6 is not easy in comparison to creating a supported kidney 7, the base of the, the muscle, the gastrocnemius, and re-establishing the upward flow, or the kick, the chui there. Kidney 6 is considered an immune supporting point. So in cases of immune issues, I would tend to gravitate to kidney 6 over other kidney points. This is similar to the TCM idea where they use this point as a choice, the point of cho the choice point for sore throats. And as I mentioned before, it is part of the mineral ocean treatment for people who might be overdosing on supplements, have stones, psoriasis, or cramps. Kidney 7, full you, to recover or repeat the flow, is a place one can feel a falling down of the muscle, of the tissue, so it can recover the flow up, the chui, the kick, the stump, to create an upward motion. This is actually a better point than kidney 6, probably because it has a stronger muscular connection, so it is quite common to use kidney 7 over kidney 6, in both the adrenal treatments and in establishing the upright movement. Kidney 7 is the point of choice with kidney 10 if there is pressure pain on kidney 2, as this is the metal point and part of the metal water treatment. 
It has a strong resonance with the ovaries and any gynecological issue. It resolves pressure pain or pain on the L2 horizontal line, be it the quadratus lumborum or gallbladder 26. Gallbladder 26, being a twisting axis, affects the pectoralis and the shoulder, so kidney 7 does release large intestine and lung channel shoulder pain, which one can also say has to do with lung metal being the mother of kidney water, and that the large intestine is on the opposite side of the clock of the kidney. Kidney 7 is also a point I would choose for pain on the back of the knee. Kidney 8, Jiao Xin, the meeting of trust, intersecting trust, is a point I consider to be basically part of kidney 7. However, in the context of the Yin Chao channel, I do consider it as a separate point from kidney 7. The Yin Chao, the meditation channel, starts at kidney 6, as we saw, Jiao Hai, to shed light on life, the ocean. And it then moves to, it arrives to Jing, Jing Ming Bladder 1, the bright eyes, the clear understanding. Along the way, it passes through kidney 8, Jiao Xin, meeting trust, because I have to have trust in the process of life. It then goes through the genitals and the diaphragm and the chest, the two areas where most of us have obstacles in letting go and in trusting. When we can do that, when we can shed light and trust the process, that is when we can welcome ourselves, welcome the person that we are. That is stomach nine, <clears throat> Ren Ying, welcome person. And then we do indeed have bright eyes or clear understanding, bladder one. That is why for me, kidney eight is important as a separate point from kidney seven and not just part of kidney seven in the context of the Yin Chao channel. Kidney 9, Zhu Bin, the guest house, <clears throat> represents how we connect our own house so that we can be good guests in it, and by extension, how we let go of unwanted guests, like demons, addictions, etc. It is, of course, the start of the Yin Wei channel, the channel that represents how we link our lives and which homes to the heart. Physically, being at the base of the gastrocnemius, it is the support of our posture, of our construction. Kidney 9 is a point used for any kind of addictions, and it is also a detox point physically together with large intestine 15. This is a combination used for de the detoxification of the liver. Kidney 9 affects the liver as well as the physical kidneys. Kidney 9 and large intestine 15 is also a major combination for all skin issues. Kidney 9 is the point of choice for structural shifts, such as pelvic shifts or TMJ or neck problems. The bin in gallbladder 7, Chu bin, the bend in the temple, is the same character with the addition of hair above as the character bin in kidney 9. So there is some connection between kidney 9 and the temples. In cases of goiter, kidney 9 tends to be the preferred point over other kidney points. Kidney 9 is usually the point for treating the physical kidney, reflecting on or above bladder 23, as well as on the deeper pressure just inside of spleen 15. If kidney 9 does not do it, try either kidney 7 or take the point three fingers below kidney 10, this point is considered to be kidney 9 detox for painkillers. Kidney 10, Yin Gu, the Yin Valley, is interpreted by some as meaning valley as in Gu, grain chi, and is supposed to represent the dissemination of the Gu to the Yin parts of the body, while Yang Gu, small intestine 5, represents its dissemination to the Yang. It is also possible to see the name as referring to the yin part of the valley that is at the back of the knee, that is referring to the location of kidney 10. Kidney 10, being water on water, is a hormonal point 
that supports bladder 66, also water on water. It is also part of a point combination that releases the cervical spine, what is called basilary artery insufficiency. That combination is originally kidney 10, liver 8, and Sanjiao 8, one third below the elbow. However, I tend to use either kidney 7 or kidney 9 rather than kidney 10. I also often replace liver 8 with liver 9. And of course, as the water point, I use kidney 10 with kidney 7 as a metal water combination when there is pressure on kidney 2, indicating adrenal exhaustion. Inner yin or xin yin men, the new bladder 37, is not a point on the kidney channel regularly. But because it is on the kidney channel, and because I use it a lot, I am including it here. The idea is that it is a newer, fresher version of bladder 37, which is supposed to affect the abundance of the flesh. Inner yin is five fingers, or four sun, above kidney 10. Or simply take the location of liver 9 and bring it down to the kidney channel. This is an area, it is not one spot. And one can also use multiple needles here. The needle direction is towards the stomach or the gallbladder channel. Inner yin is the place where we initiate the lift of the pelvic floor, as if there was a straw between our legs, and it gets sucked up the perineum up the front of the spine, all the way up to the shoulders. Originally, this was thought of as the trapezius releasing point, when the body has the support of the inner thighs and the perineal floor, the shoulders and the trapezius no longer have to contract to lift us up, and they can release and relax. On the left side, inner yin can be used for constipation, as the adductors can affect the motility of the descending colon in the rectum. This is a hormonal area and can be used both for diagnosis and treatment of gynecological problems. Many women will have bumps along this area indicating hormonal imbalances. I also use this point in obese patients to shuttle other kidney points below the knee. In an obese patient, points below the knee might not produce the desired effect because the fat and weight are pushing down against the needle stimulation. So adding a point above the knee to help shuttle the needle below is often necessary in order to get results. Inner yin is part of the so-called upright posture treatment protocol. Starting with kidney 6, inner yin, mu shu, and either bladder 2, stomach 9, or the points under the teeth. Because we're all used to the numbering system, I will go through the kidney points in the lower abdomen in the sequence they are presented in the textbooks. However, it is my opinion that the channel moves down from the navel at kidney 16 down to kidney 11 to home at the pelvic pubic bone, rather than moving up from kidney 11 all the way to kidney 27. Kidney 11, Hengu, the horizontal bone, is where the channel homes to a bone, a horizontal bone. The other branch, which goes up from kidney 16, will home to another horizontal bone, the hyoid bone. Kidney 11 and stomach 30 are an energetic hub. This is where the freeze reflex associated with the psoas is, and it provides us with the ability to sprint or move forward. This tends to be much more pronounced in animals, which we can see when they leap, as well as when they freeze when being preyed upon. This freeze response allows for the shutting down of the nervous system. That means that kidney 11, stomach 30 area has something to do with the nervous system. You can see the importance of being able to pull in and extend the area of the groin with these kangaroos who are jumping. You see that the release of the coiled energy in kidney 11 and how it propels you to, to move forward. And you can see that also in this mountain lion. And then we can also see the freeze response in the steer in the headlights as somewhat gentler image than an animal about to be eaten. But you can see this contraction 
in the hind legs. These create a strong connection between stomach nine, the higher bone, which is an area that's also associated with the nervous system, and kidney 11. We can also look at it in a slightly different way when we look at the character for the Wren channel, which is a person on the left and workload on the right. The workload, when we look at that, the horizontal lines at the top and the bottom represent the hyoid and the pubic bones. And the central line, horizontal line, represents the navel line in spleen 15, da heng, the great horizontal, like a balance beam of a tightrope walker, giving us better balance. Kidney 12, da he, the great inspiration, is just next to zhang ji, ren 3, the central pole and he, which contains two fires, or two crimson reds, also suggests the idea of the dantian, the red, the cinnabar filled, even though it's a different red. I do not use this point much clinically. If I do, it is more as a diverted REN3 that was slightly pushed to, to the right or the left, as a point that can affect the extremities, just as the central pole can affect the extremities. Kidney 13, Qi Shui, the cave of Qi, level with Ren 4, reflects the uterus. One might say that the uterus is a cave where Qi is cultivated, but Kidney 13 also has another name, an alternate name, called Bao Men, the uterus gate. For me, the points Kidney 12 and 13 pretty much share the idea of being the Dantian area. As the reflection of the uterus, Pressure pain on kidney 13 can be resolved with either spleen points or liver points, depending on the problem. For example, uterine cramps are likely to be resolved with spleen 3, and fibroids or bleeding from fibroids might be resolved by use of liver 8. Kidney 14, Sir Man, the four completes, level with REN5, is also associated by name with marrow, and is named Sui Zhang or Sui Fu, the, the marrow center or the marrow palace. Again, I would look at this as part of the Dantian area. However, when we look at the names of the points below the navel, we do see some division in the lower jowl. The bottom half tends to carry names that suggest energetic hubs, some sort of central homing. That will be stomach 30, Qi Chang, or Qi Jie, Ren 3, Zhang Ji, the central pole, or the north star, and kidney 12, Da He, the great brilliance, as well as stomach 29, Gui Lai, returning or restoring. Then we have the passage at the level of Ren 4, Guan Yuan, the passage to the primary, and at that level we have kidney 13, Qi Shui, Qi suggests movement, and stomach 28, Shui Dao, the water pathways. So this level suggests some sort of movement, some sort of passage. Then, just below the navel, above Ren 4, but below the navel, we have names that imply accumulations. Ren 5, Shi Men, the stone gate. Stomach 27, Da Ju, the big grate, possibly suggesting something that accumulates and grows bigger, like, say, a mass or a fibroid. And kidney 14, Se Man, the four folds. And above that, still below the navel, we have Ren 7, Yin Jiao, intersection of Yin. And Yin does not connote movement either. Stomach 26, Wai Ling, the outer mound. And kidney 15, Dong Ju, the great concentration or the great the, the center concentration or the central focusing. So what we see here is that the upper part of the lower abdomen seems to reflect accumulations, while the lower half reflects the Dantian and its movements. Qi Hai, the ocean of Qi, rent six, is in the midst of the area that tends to reflect accumulations, but is really about the capacity to create movement. When we look at alternate names for Ren 6, we see the navel featuring as well as the carta Huang, which will fit the navel. 
clinically, this kind of understanding that the lower jaw is has an upper part of it tending to reflect some stagnation or contractility, while the lower part of it represents the hollowness of the lifting of the pelvic floor of the core strength, makes sense to me and tends to be quite accurate. Now we are at kidney 16, but I would caution us to remember that we might really call this kidney 11. The number of kidney 11 up the navel into the chest is suitable for the chunk channel, but I do not believe it reflects the flow of the kidney channel, which moves from the navel downwards to the bladder with a separate branch moving from kidney 16 upwards to the chest. We looked at the character Huang in kidney 16 Wang Shu, when we looked at the bladder channel in bladder 43, Ga Wang Shu, bladder 53, Bao Wang, and bladder 51, Huang Men. Wang is often said to be the space between the heart and the diaphragm. And Ellis also, while saying this, says also that it is the so-called vitals, but he does not elaborate on what these vitals are. The character itself is composed of the character Wang, something buried, missing, or perished, and the radical for the flesh, meaning inside the body, underneath it. So we might ask ourselves, what is it that is dead, that is still inside the body, and deserves a shoe point, as in kidney 16, Huang Shu? And then the answer would be our ancestors, who are dead, in some cases for hundreds and thousands of years, but are still influencing us through their contributions to our genetic code. Wang Shu makes sense when we look at it as related to the umbilical cord, our connection to our most immediate ancestor. There are very few shoe points that are not on the bladder channel. Small intestine 10, small intestine 14, and small intestine 15 do have the character Shu in them, but they all are also referring to the shoulder. Due to Yao Shu, the lower back Shu, is another Shu point that is not on the bladder channel and is basically referring to its own local area by name. The only other Shu points are kidney 16, Huang Shu, and kidney 27, Shu Fu, the Shu points for the Huang and the Shu point for the Fu. Now these are systems, these are not localities. And that makes us pay a lot more respect to kidney 16 because it is a shoe point and it's not on the bladder channel. When we recall that the kidney channel comes up the spine and then enters the kidney and descends to meet the lung, the bladder, and that another branch starts at the kidneys and moves up the chest and the throat, we see that kidney 16 is where one branch goes down and one goes up. When one experiences fear or shock, one tends to contract into the navel the kidney channel gets split, and since fear tends to push down, that split will show us as pressure pain just below kidney 16. This is what we call the adrenal shock reflex. This is also the point where the channel comes out into from the spine, and kidney 16 is a good point for sciatica and for releasing the piriformis. Kidney 16 is also a good point for nasal allergies and other sinus issues. The nose is at the center of the face and is reflected and treated by the navel, which is at the center of the torso. And our immunity is first reinforced through the pulsation in the umbilical cord before it is cut. This is how mother passes the last bits of immunity um, after labor. Kidney 17 to kidney 20 seem to reflect their proximities to REN10 through 13 and the digestive system. I do not use them clinically and have little resonance with their names or usage. Kidney 17, Shang Chu, the merchant bent, level with the lower one, the lower stomach, REN10, is probably referring to the curves of the small intestine. While Shang is associated with metal, this is not lateral enough to connect with a large intestine. Whether one can affect, say, absorption in the curves of the small intestine is something I've never looked into with 
kidney 17, mostly because it is too local. However, it could be a reflex for that. Kidney 18, Shi Guan, the stone gate, level with Ren 11, Jian Li, the establishing of the interior. And this seems to suggest an obstacle or an accumulation in the GI tract. Kidney 19, Yin Du, the in metropolis, suggests accumulations also, and it is level with Ren 12, the stomach center. And at the level of Ren 13, the upper stomach, kidney 20, Tong Gu, penetrating valley, suggests both accumulation and the ability to open up. So these four kidney points seem to take on names that reflect accumulation or obstructions that might be associated with the system of REN10 through 13, meaning the digestive system. Kidney 21, Hyo Men, the secluded or the quiet gate, is the last point before we come to the ribs, the yin area. Ellis prefers the translation of Hyo Men as dark gate, which makes it more in line with the idea of yin than just quiet or secluded. Either way, the point name seems to refer to it being the gate to, or the edge of the ribs, a yin area. Kidney 22, Bu Lang, the stepping corridor, is the first point of the channel that is on the ribs, and its name is indicative of that. The ribs are like a corridor or like a ladder. According to some traditions, the kidney points on the chest are considered front shoe points, as Su-158 says that there are 12 shoe points on the breast and 12 on the chest. Kidney 27, Shu Fu, can be seen as the shoe point of the Fu organs, and that would suggest that kidney 26 down to kidney 22 would be the shoe points of the five Zong. Kidney 26 at the top will be for the lungs, Next down, kidney 25 for the heart. Next down, kidney 24 would be for the liver. Further down is kidney 23 for the heart. And the last one below is kidney 22, which will be the shoe for the kidneys in that system. With that in mind, Yo Men, the dark gate, can easily be seen as related to kidneys by name as well. We now come to the three kidney chest points that have either Shen or Ling in this character. Kidney 23, Shen Feng, the seal of authority of the Shen. There is one other seal in the body, and this is liver 4, the seal of the center. And stomach 30, which is known as both Qi Chong or Qi Jie, the Qi thoroughfare, has the same idea of conferring authority. In Qi Jie, we have the same character as in Feng. Feng seal is composed of a tablet on the right, on the left, and a hand on the right. It represents the handing over of authority over a feudal land. The Jie in Stomach 30, Street, has the same character in the middle, surrounded by walking or movement. It is meant to represent walking with authority, hence a thoroughfare. There is indeed a connection between kidney 23, which is on the left side can reflect the heart and circulatory conditions, just as REN 17 could, and stomach 30, which is the lower reach of the Zong pectoral chi. Kidney 24, 23, 24, and 25 on the left side reflect cardiac condition and on both sides, left and right, can reflect the bronchies. And there are also very good points that can be used in hospice work as massage points for calming and easing people as they journey towards death. And they can be used on anyone to calm fear and anxiety. These three points that are with the Shen or Ling characters. Kidney 24, Ling Shu, the soul's burial ground, is another point used in hospice work with massage to ease the pain of death. And on the left side can reflect cardiac conditions on both, if it shows on both sides, it could reflect the bronchies. And kidney 25, Shen Tsung, the Shen storage, 
is another point that is calming and easing for use in death passages, reflects cardiac conditions on the left side, and um, on both sides it can reflect the bronchies. Kidney 26, Yu Zhang, the refined center, could be a reference to the heart also, as in the heart mind. It can also reflect the bronchies on either the left or the right side. Kidney 27, Shu Fu, the Shu of the Fu, is seen by some people as the Shu of the Fu organs. It can also represent the lungs, where exchange takes place. Nagano considered kidney 27 to be parathyroid related, so the Fu, the exchange in that case, is with regard to calcium exchange between the blood and the bones. Clinically, kidney 27 is used as part of the adrenal treatment with kidney points below the knee. The points below the knee tonify the adrenals in the gonads, and kidney 27 is considered to be subduing the parathyroid. The parathyroid is antagonistic to the gonads and adrenals, and it leaches calcium out of the bones when the adrenals or gonads weaken. So, as one tonifies the adrenals with the points below the knee, it is important to subdue the parathyroid with kidney 27 so as to help the adrenal action more. Pressing kidney 27 produces a sympathetic response in the body. This is useful in cases of heartburn, which might be a result of a confused parasympathetic feedback that is constantly calling for the stomach acid to be released, so eventually that acid moves up. If when, if when you press kidney 27, the heartburn is alleviated, this confirms that the cause of the heartburn is a confused nervous system. However, kidney 27 will not be the point to be treating. Rather, you might be using the food poisoning point under the second toe.